going, Danger Boy. You know, we were totally airborne out there. Oh, come on, just for a second. Um, no, no, we were bouncing off of waves, and then on top of that, you got really close to that freighter, and I <laughs> thought that was going to be it. End of the story. That was the best part. Come on. You really are crazy, you know that? Admit it. Out there on the water, bouncing from wave to wave, you got that freighter coming right toward us. Really made you feel alive, huh? Corinthos got to you too, didn't he? Now you'll do anything to protect his little lying slut of a daughter. Excuse me? How did I just hear you refer to a sweet 17-year-old girl? Well, what business is that of yours? She is my son's half-sister that makes her family to me. You have my condolences. It must be a real burden to be related to such trash. Oh, you want to talk about trash, Mr. Bauer? You are the living, breathing definition of the word. Your kid beat Christina up so brutally, he got her stuck in the hospital twice. My son is dead because of that little bitch and her mother. If I don't get those hospital records by the end of the day, I am going to sue this hospital for obstruction of justice. If I wasn't in a hospital right now, I would hand that man his ass. Oh, whoopsie. It looks like his papers have been misfiled. <laughs> a baby is missing from the nursery. I need you two to take a seat here in the lounge and stay put. Hey. Well, I guess I picked the wrong afternoon to visit the hospital, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I had uh, lockdowns all the time in Bentonville, so. It is an absolute travesty you were in that place. Oh, don't they got me out. Fine. That is one of my favorite things about Port Charles. It's a decent-sized city, right? But 30 minutes, and you're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, you gotta love all these little islands, right? <laughs> it's like your own private beach. Did you go to the beach a lot as a kid? Of course I did. Pony Island Beach is great, <laughs> but I'm guessing you don't know anything about that, Mr. Mob Snob. Got my own private oh, beach. Well, no, it was not like that. <laughs> yeah, I bet you were quite the heap of trouble back in Bensonhurst, weren't you? Oh, of course. <laughs> Actually, I tried, but it was a challenge. Every time I got home from school, my grandma already knew. She called my mom and my dad. They yelled at me from three different time zones. Well, so <laughs> your parents weren't around much, huh? Oh, no. Mm -mm. They're in the music industry. So they travel a lot, but don't worry. I mean, every time I needed adult supervision, Olivia was there to be my mom. Uh, Franco. So you and your friends were up on the roof? Of course. Sneaking beer, getting away from the grown ups, <laughs> stupid wow. block parties. I'm sure you've done that too. Me? Mm -hmm. This guy? No, block parties? No way. Really? Growing up, it was just me and my sister. That's it. Oh my God, how awful. Not really. You know, it was just the two of us, but she loved me. It was nice. <laughs> there was this one summer where she wasn't even old enough to drive yet, right? She came into my room with my dad's car keys, his favorite sports car. Uh -huh. So she had this idea we were going to take it for this joyride. So we went down to the garage, opened the garage, wheeled the car down to the bottom of the driveway, which I kid you not, was like a mile and a half. <laughs> I mean, we got down there, put the keys in, let the top down, drove the car as fast as it could possibly go. Turn the music up, let it blare. I swear you could probably hear us for miles. Now it's just us, you know, driving, singing, having a good time. Drove all the way to the Jersey Shore. Nice. <laughs> we stayed there for a couple of days. We knew there'd be hell to pay, but we didn't care. It was good times. Well, you really loved your sister. Yeah. And I'm telling you, she was not the beast that Sonny makes her out to be. I mean, look, I'll be the first person to disagree with the choices my sister made in her life, but she loved me, and there wasn't a thing in the world she wouldn't do for me. I don't know, I've never really had anybody like that. So, you want me to maybe try and flag down a pippin' see if I can get us some coffee? Yeah, she said stay here. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go crazy. Just so you know, I may have to start cleaning something very soon. <laughs> Okay, thanks for the heads up. So have you ever had any thoughts about what you might do when your parole's over? 
You know, I just want to get through it first. Yeah. Because you're going to finish school, though, right? Yeah, I'm not very good at planning ahead. Uh, well, at your age, who is? I was 15, I was pregnant. And when I was Christina's age, I was uh, chasing a toddler all over Bensonhurst. Uh, that's hard to imagine. Yeah, having a baby that young is pretty overwhelming. I wouldn't recommend it to many people, but you know what? It taught me a lot. It taught me to always keep going and to have faith that there's always something better coming up. You know? I know that's true for you, Michael. Oh, it's your mommy's hotel. I'm sorry. Honey, I gotta take this. So, I've been trying to figure you out. You've got the world at your fingertips, and you've got this thirst for danger, and here you are, a dating a woman that's safe and really old. <laughs> Who I'm still very much in love I with. Know, so. I know, I know, I know. But that didn't keep you away from my little Christina. Yeah, and I should have stayed away from Christina. Yes, you should have. But that's not the point. You put up this tough front, Johnny. And you pretend like you don't need anyone or anything. But I get you, and I know what's going on. Really? Yeah. What's that? You're lonely.